Hello, in this video I want to show you the benefits of using a Smith predictor strategy in process control. It is very useful to control systems with large delay times that sometimes are impossible to control with a simple paid controller. Here I have a discrete first order model with a tuned PI controller with the following parameters. It has a gain of 5 a time constant of 5 seconds and a dead time of 16 seconds 60 seconds notice that the delay is 30 times the time constant and that makes the system complex to control with a simple controller with a sample time of 1 second his discrete equivalent is as follows with alpha 0.8188 Seven and beta uh, 0.9063. So let's simulate this. The yellow line is the set point, the blue line is the process output, and the orange line is the control effort. We can see that for this system in particular, it is possible to control with a simple PI controller but the output takes a long time to get the set point and also it was very difficult to tune this controller due to the large process delay so let me show you the Smith predictor strategy so we have an, a no process with a de large delay time but if we can estimate a model of the process without the dead time and if we know the dead time of the process approximately, we can achieve a better control performance with this arrangement. Because instead of controlling the real plant, as the previous example, we control a model with the same dynamics of the real process, but without the dead time. So the calculated control effort applied to the process will produce the same output of the model with but with a delay time. This configuration also feedbacks the estimation error between the real output and the estimated output with the dead time. However, everything is not so wonderful because this strategy requires that both the model and the estimated delay be very similar to those of the real process. This can be afforded with our line system identification technique in combination with the knowledge of the process. Let's see an example. So here I have the same model of the previous example but with a Smith predictor configuration. Notice that the model is exactly the same as the real process and the estimated delay time is also the same as the real process. This is only for showing the strategy in the best conditions. The yellow line is the set point, the blue line is the output of the process with the Smith predictor configuration, the orange line is the output of the, uh, of the system with only the PI controller, the green line is the control effort with the Smith predictor configuration, and the purple line is the control effort in the first example. Notice that the output with the Smith predictor gets to the set point too much faster than the previous, previous example. This is a benefit of using this kind of strategy, but remember, this example has the best possible model to make predictions. So, as I said, we need the strategy to, check, to have the best possible model. For this, we need a system identification techniques. For example, I use this block called Recursive List Square Estimator from the System Identification Toolbox to estimate a discrete model with four parameters according to this equation. And then I try it with our model but without feedback. Then I use the estimated model to make predictions of the real process without the time using the actual output of the process u 
and a feedback connection for the output and here are the results the green the yellow line is the process input the blue line is the real output and the orange line is the predicted output without the dead time notice that the prediction is very accurate but remember that this example is just a first model order in the other window we see the parameters of the model that are permanently moving to get to the best solution but we can see that they get to the perfect value around 180 seconds finally I tried this technique to make a Smith predictor strategy with online system identification. The only thing that I assumed was the knowledge of the dead time, the real dead time, that in real process is not so difficult to guess. For that, let me show you this image. If we do a change in the input of the process, we can calculate the dead time watching how long takes the output to begin to change this uh, for example in this image we can calculate that um, with t2 less t1 and that is the dead time so here I have the Smith predictor block the system identification block and here are the plots The yellow line is the set point, the blue line is the process output, the orange line is the estimated output, the green line is the predicted output, and the purple line is the control effort. Notice that the first period is used for the system identification. At the beginning, the model has no parameters, so it begins to adjust. To adjust until it gets to the right ones. To avoid this in real implementations, there is a period without control and only for system identification, and the input is usually a PRBS. This one. A pseudo random binary sequence with a certain amplitude and a certain frequency that assures to maintain the output in a safety range. I do not produce this but to keep it simple I leave this I leave it like this notice that after this period the results are very nice the output gets to the set point almost immediately after the time so in conclusion with the Smith predictor with our line system identification technique we can achieve a better control performance than using a simple PI controller. I hope this video to be useful for you. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.